Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I'm back with another faith journaling process video for you guys as we work through uh, this kit from Open Journey. I am working through the Take 4 Word of God kit. This is the first kit in the Take 4 series. I will have a uh, link down below the unboxing video for this kit if you have not received this kit yet or purchased it. Or um, There are physical options back in stock so Ingrid did go ahead and restock this first kit. Uh, so if you want the physical physical version, you have that now. There's also digital options if you want to jump in and go through this kit. Uh, as you are perusing the website, you may notice that there is a second kit now in the Take 4 series. It is on rest. Now, I do have that kit in my possession. I just got it, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday. And so as soon as I get done filming this video for you guys, I'm going to turn right around and I'm going to film that unboxing. So that unboxing is coming. Um, but I did want to finish out this first one with you guys since I have been kind of walking you through week by week. I wanted to have those resources for you. So we are in week three. I know this says week one. That's a typo. Don't worry. The new ones are updated. The digital version's updated. Um, it is week three. Uh, so there is going to be one more week. So I'm going to try to work in week four at some point while also starting the next kit so that we are on time because I did get a little bit of a late start with this kit. Um, this week is VBS week at my church and I am volunteering in a part of that. And so so we just, there's new kits, processes, all that on top of me being gone for like six hours <laughs> in the morning. So bear with me. I will get these videos up for you. They'll just be a little bit slow rowing, rolling in the next week as I get those up. But today's video is going to be on week three of kit one, the word of God. And um, I will have once again, my notes linked down below for you guys. Now I did make a change to the links. I've gone ahead and updated the links um, in the past videos as well. Uh, hopefully that will be a little bit easier to print. Uh, I had test printed these notes and I didn't have a problem, but I was seeing a couple comments from people having some issues with Dropbox. And so I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm hoping maybe this new way, if you're still having problems, let me know, leave a comment down below or email me uh, and I will try to walk you through that. But uh, these notes will be down below. For those of you guys just tuning in, I would encourage you to go back, watch the previous videos. Um, they are all standalone videos. They're just all in the same kind of theme. Um, but I do have notes posted for those past videos as well. You can find the notes linked in the description box below the video. Uh, just for those of you just tuning in, these notes are not my brain. Nothing is coming from my brain. I am pulling notes together from a variety of resources and I am including those resources with links uh, down at the bottom um, of my notes there so you can see where I've gotten all of these resources. I'm pulling from gotquestions.org. Uh, I'm giving you guys some notes out of my MacArthur Study Bible. I'm using Bible Hub for uh, cross-references and then Blue Letter Bible for commentary and things like that. So not my brain. This, these are all people who are way smarter than me when it comes to studying the Bible. And so I'm just kind of compiling all of the notes in the way that I do for myself. And But I'm putting it in a PDF that then you guys can have access to. Um, but I would encourage you to kind of use these as practice and then practice it on your own. So I had mentioned in some videos, I will not be doing notes. The idea is that you guys are kind of exercising those muscles on your own and then hopefully can start utilizing these resources on your, on your own. But for the time being, I will compile these for you. So going through week three, we are looking at Hebrews 1, 3. Um, and that verse here in my NASB translation says, and he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So again, you can find these notes linked down below for you guys. I am not going to cover everything. I just had a couple of highlights that I wanted to kind of point out to you. Uh, just more so just to show I love Ingrid's studies so much. As I was working through this and going through the verse, seeing the tie-in with the last two weeks was just so, so good. I mean, if you looked at the, the verse on its surface, you may not, I mean, you could tell that they're in the same theme, but as I'm going through the commentary and the notes, they're constantly like referring to the verses we've already covered or talking about the things that we've already been talking about. So it's really neat to see just how thoroughly Ingrid puts together these studies for you guys. But uh, coming from gotquestions.org, I did link uh, an article here. It says, what does it mean that Jesus upholds all things 
by the word of his power. And so it's kind of um, addressing that specific questions. It says uh, Hebrews 1, 3 shares similar language and imagery with Colossians 1, 15 through 17, which says the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him, all things hold together. One thing I especially love about Ingrid's devotionals is just how much emphasis she puts on the importance of Jesus and his sacrifice for us and just just really honing in. There's no question that Ingrid is uh, well versed in the gospel and shares it, you know, in every way possible. And so as we've been working through this particular study, just this reoccurrence of this theme of the supremacy of Christ, talking about the the Godhead, you know, the Trinity, we've talked about that. Um, the Jesus being present at the very beginning of humanity and just the creation of everything, Jesus was present for that. And so it's something that we have seen um, throughout the notes as we've looked at these various uh, scripture. And so I just love that we are getting that real, there's just no question about it when you're seeing all of these verses, you know, kind of referencing something similar. It says here, according to Genesis 1, God created everything out of nothing through the power of his word. And in the New Testament, Jesus is the very word of God himself, John 1, 1 through 3. Uh, with his word, Jesus speaks life and power into all things. Nothing can exist or survive outside of his word and power. Imagine Jesus as the pillars that hold up the entire house of the universe. Take away the pillars and the entire house would crumble. Beneath itself, were Jesus not holding up all creation, then everything would crumble beneath itself. Um, so one note I do want to make is anywhere where you see this bold purple font, those are hyperlinks. And so if you're accessing this PDF online um, before you print it out or, you know, online, you can't tap this in person once you've printed it. <laughs> online when you look at these. These are all hyperlinks um, and those hyperlinks will either take you to where you can read that scripture or additional articles. So I know like Divine Nature, that one there is going to be an additional article on gotquestions.org. Some of these verses, um, there will be articles specifically about that verse. So you can really dig in and find even more um, information. Carrying on to the MacArthur Study Bible Notes, um, the way that the Study Bible Notes work is he usually references like a specific phrase or word and then commentates on that within the verse. I did on this one, I went ahead and highlighted those areas in the passage that are referencing with the MacArthur Study Bible Notes. Um, the last two sessions, I kind of did my own highlighting and underlining of things that were jumping out to me and that I found important. But this time around, I went ahead and just did it off of the MacArthur Bible. Um... In reference to radiance, this was so interesting. And I think this happened last week also, um, that there was a word or phrase that was only seen in that particular scripture or only seen in the New Testament. And we're seeing that here again uh, in Hebrews 1.3. Uh, for the term radiance, this term is used only here in the New Testament. It expresses the concept of sending forth light or shining. We have some cross references there. Uh, the meaning of reflection is not appropriate here. The sun is not just reflecting God's glory. He is God and radiates his own essential glory. Love that. You guys know how much I love word studies. So you can fetch your bottoms that that word is in the word studies that I pulled together for you guys. So you can kind of dig into that more. Uh, exact representation of his nature. The term translated exact representation is used only here in the New Testament. In extra biblical literature, it was employed for an engraving on wood, an etching in metal, a brand on animal hide, an impression in clay, and a stamped image on coins. The sun is the perfect imprint, the exact representation of the nature and essence of God in time and space. And then you've got some cross references there. As I'm reading that, it's just coming to mind. Um, I had to take a world history class last semester or the semester before. Uh, and we really were looking at um, the stamps that certain uh, countries or townships would stamp on their pottery. And so then when it would leave that area, you know, it was kind of their signature on there that, that you know, that belonged to them. And I just think of this, you know, it, it's just this identifying mark. And we think about how we've been identified by the blood of Jesus. I just, uh, I love that. I think you could really go into that and have some fun journaling um, imagery there. You do have some cross references if you want to dig in a little bit further. 
uh, upholds the universe and everything in it, constantly sustained by the sun's powerfully effective word. The term also conveys the concept of movement or progress. The son of God directs all things toward the consummation of all things to God's sovereign purpose. He who spoke all things into existence also sustains his creation and consummates his purpose by his word. This isn't something that's just been done. It's being actively done. Um, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, right? It, it, this is just something that is continually happening. And we have that assurance knowing that Jesus is continually doing that for us. Purification of sins by the substitutionary sacrifice of himself on the cross. Uh, and then you've got some verses there. Um, and then you can continue on and study through that. For David Guzik commentary, this is what I pull from Blue Letter Bible app. Some of this is, uh, you know, it's kind of similar to some of the other notes, but where it says he made the world, now I do want to reference because it depends on the translation. So like I, and this may, now that I'm looking at it, with the commentary, it's usually covering like a whole chunk of scripture. So I definitely would encourage you guys to read the context around Hebrews uh, 1, 3 and the verses before and after. So he made the worlds maybe um, in scripture around it. But it says the ancient Greek word translated worlds is aeon from which we get our uh, English word eons. It means that Jesus made more than the material world. He also made the very ages. History itself is the creation of the son of God. And so just, I wanted to highlight and just really point out, you know, Jesus didn't just come onto the scene in the new Testament. <laughs> he has been there from the very beginning of time. Um, the brightness of his glory, uh, Jesus is the brightness of the Father's glory, the ancient Greek word for brightness, uh, which speaks of the radiance that shines from a source of light. So I did include um, that word as a word study for you guys. It says, in this sense, Jesus is the beam of God's glory. We've never seen the sun, only the rays of his light as they come to us. Even so, we've never seen the God of the God the Father, but we see him through the rays of the Son of God. I thought that was a really interesting imagery that might um, be something that you guys want to journal um, in that way. Uh, upholding all things by the word of his power. The idea behind the word translated upholding is better thought of as maintaining. The word does not have the idea of passively holding something up, but of actively sustaining. And so that was, you know, referenced there in MacArthur's notes as well. Uh, the tense of the verb upholding is significant of Christ's constant work in relation to the world. And um, that's Colossians 1.17 confirms that for you. Uh, and so then I have some cross references there for you guys to explore and then word studies. What I do for word studies is I actually go over to blue letter Bible app. I look at the verse, um, I think it's called interlinear. So you can see it in the English and, you know, Greek, Hebrew, whichever, um, new Testament, old Testament. And I just kind of go through and kind of pick out ones that I think are important or have interesting, um, definitions. So, uh, of course you can go and, you know, reference even more in this verse here, but I pulled out the radiance again. That was one that was, uh, interesting. You know, it's not talking about reflecting, um, it's, it's different than reflecting, uh, the phrase of his glory, and then the exact representation. The exact representation had a pretty big um, information there. And I'm pulling definitions from the Vines uh, Dictionary. And so there were a couple here. I went ahead and included everything they had, even if it's not pertaining specifically to this verse. If there was interesting notations, I included those for you guys as well. So, I mean, you very easily could take this and run off with even more studies. Uh, same with the phrase of sins. Um, literally means a missing of the mark. So really great study that you can do on that phrase there. Um, let's see. Yeah. So then that continues on. There's even additional notes for that phrase. So like I said, this is just to kind of give you guys some inspiration, some help, maybe time saving. Um, I do the hard work for you. So then you can just pull off the PDF and jump right into your study. But ideally I'm doing these things to kind of help walk alongside you guys. And then hopefully you'll be able to do this on your own if you're not already. So take advantage of those notes down below there for you guys. And then let's kind of talk about what I'll be doing for the journaling session today. So I, I have been creating in this mixed media journal. I'm just doing a spread for each week. And this has turned out to be a place where I can uh, do some prayer journaling. And I've, this has just been really, really good for me. I've used to just kind of go through and write some generic prayers in my Bible, not always, but 
for the video's sake, it's sometimes I would just do kind of generic prayers, but I've been trying to be very intentional um, about what I put in here. And so again, we'll be doing a two page spread here, leaving myself um, some area to journal. But uh, if you watched my recent Word Study Wednesday video, I used my gel plate. Uh, this is this gel printing plate. I used the smaller one in that video. So we're gonna be continuing to play with the gel plate. I know not everybody has a gel plate, um, they are not a, an inexpensive tool for sure. I definitely had to like add it to my wish list, saved up my money before I purchased it. I mean, it's not the most expensive item in my office, but for what it is, you know, it feels like it's, it's expensive. So I would encourage you to watch for sales. I also would encourage you to check out online. There's a lot of recipes for DIY gel plates. Of course, those are going to perform a little bit different. There are downsides to doing the DIY, but maybe before you invest in an actual gel plate, you just want to play around and see if it's something that you are going to be interested in and that you're going to enjoy. So take a look at those uh, DIY. You just have to search DIY gel print plate on uh, YouTube. And I'm sure there's a million videos out there showing how to make your own using gelatin. I've also seen a couple of videos out there using silicone mats. So uh, like a silicone, a silicone mat, <laughs> like for cooking, like a kitchen silicone mat um, that you can use for a gel plate. Of course, you get a little bit of a different result, but again, that might be something that you already have in your space that would allow you to kind of practice and play around and decide if it's something that you want to do. So um, while I will be using that for today's video, you can still use inspiration from other things that I'm doing in this video or try these techniques in different ways, um, even just pulling a color palette um you know so don't just dis dismiss this if you don't have a gel plate but I had picked up this book I've mentioned it several times now on Instagram now this is I think the second video or third video I've talked about this book I will have it linked down below for you guys so I'm just kind of using this to really help me be comfortable with my gel plate because I it's sat here for years of me not using it because I just didn't feel comfortable and this book has really helped kind of walk me through step by step so I'm not so overwhelmed so today's um, process I will be using the chapter 11 Venetian plaster technique that she has in this book she does have a video on this as well I will link that down below for you guys so you can see straight from the artist that um, originally did this how she does it I'll be using some different products today but this is kind of what we will be doing. And so I thought this would be great while I'm working in a mixed media book. You know, I have, I'm not worrying about messing up my Bible or going bleed through or anything like that. But the nice thing about gel plate is that you can create backgrounds and then add these in. So this is something where you can pull out your distress products, pull out your products that you know that don't play well in your Bible, create backgrounds and then add those backgrounds into your Bible. So I just played around with this Venetian plaster technique. I love this one here. Um, the key to this technique is you do need to have a matte or chalk uh, paint. I have tried it with regular acrylics and it, 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 you just get a different effect if you use regular acrylic paints, but the matte allows it to soak up. Um, she uses a different product in her video. I'll be using just, just spray stains um, and another uh, item I'll show you here in a minute, but um, using a flat paint, a matte or a chalk paint allows it to kind of absorb this product. So it just, I don't know, this is how it works. So it gives you this, you know, it looks like eroded plaster. This one here has a little bit of mica stain. So if you jumped on the bandwagon with the new Tim Holtz uh, spritz product, um, this would be a fun time to play with those. I don't typically use a lot of pearlescent things, but I did do a little bit, but look at all of that texture. So I just did these on regular copy paper on these ones. I did also do it on some of the Tim Holtz uh, collage paper. I tried the technique on there and it did work. So if you have the ones from Ingrid, so Open Journey did do a set of um, mixed media tissue paper. So you could do the same technique with these. I just didn't want these prints um, for today's video, like in the background of what I'm doing, but you very easily could do the same technique with this. Um, this was like a full page that I did. And then this was just some plain collage paper. So this is basically the same thing as Ingrid's. It just doesn't have anything printed on it. So um, I will have all of these things linked down below for you guys. I liked the plain collage paper because then I could create my own collage paper. So I could use her stamps and stamp on there and create my own if I wanted to. And so that is what I used for this piece here. And so this is actually what I'm going to be kind of working towards for my background um, for today's video. And then I've just pulled out a couple of things 
um, like one of the cards from the kit. I went ahead and pre-typed out Hebrews 1-3 on there. Um, some of the add-on stickers, pulled those out. Uh, for the verse address, I used my little Dyson, or not Dyson, Dymo uh, label maker and punched out Hebrews 1-3. Uh, I used a couple of the tickets. This is actually where I'll do my prayer journaling since it's a little tricky to write on this. You could write on this with like a Sharpie marker or a permanent marker um, or something like that, but I decided to use these little add-on tickets that you can grab. And then I went ahead and used the, a hole punch to give me that uh, decorative kind of ticket edge that you have on there. So the, not going to do anything super, super crazy. Of course, there will be some other finishing things as we go through the video, but I wanted to just say, you know, talk about that book and what the primary kind of process of this video is going to be showing you how to do this Venetian plaster background. So let me go ahead, put you guys on fast forward, and we'll put together this layout for Hebrews 1-3. All right, so for this page, I'm using my larger gel plate and I'm gonna start with a kind of gray colored paint and a caramel colored paint and just lay out a little bit of each of those and then I'm gonna roll that onto my gel plate and I am rolling off any excess onto that little side scrap piece of paper over there. And then I'll lay down my collage paper to pick up this first layer of paint. It does not need to be perfect. Remember, we're trying to create texture and interest in the background, so I don't really care if it's wrinkly. Uh, I am really, really careful when I pull this up because that collage paper is much more delicate than, say, copy paper, uh, especially when it's wet. So I do dry in between each layer uh, just to be safe. Now I'm going to do a layer of white paint and I put like four times as much white paint on here as I needed to do. So it's going to take me a second to deal with that mess, but um, I am intentionally lifting off a bunch of this paint with a paper towel and this is creating another layered texture. I should have taken off more of the white paint, but at this point I don't, I don't realize that. So um, this is going to be my second layer on that same piece of collage paper. As you can see, this white actually shows up quite a bit more than it did on the page that I showed towards the beginning of the video, but that's okay. So for this next layer, I'm going to add in some Hickory Smoke Distress Spray Stain. And because it's super thin, I'm going to add some matte fluid medium to this. And this just kind of thickens up that Distress Spray Stain a little bit so that it's closer to the consistency of the product that Robin uses in her video um, for this technique. And you can see how that creates all that texture. And then I'm sprinkling on a little bit of. Um, Oh, it's the new color. Something timber. Scorched timber. I <laughs> just tapped a little bit of, of that uh, on there and then laid that same collage paper right back down onto that uh, gel plate. And remember, I did dry in between each layer. That way that collage paper wasn't wet when I was sticking it down on to my gel plate. And now I've got just a ton of interest on that uh, collage paper. And you could go ahead and continue. I made several more backgrounds. So on the right hand side is one that we just made together. The left hand side is one that I had done at, off camera. And you can see I, I prefer the one on the left hand side. The um, I think I used pumice stone distress spray stain for that rather than the hickory smoke that I used um, in the video here. But um, you can see you just kind of, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. So to adhere this to my journal, I'm going to lay down a layer of matte gel medium. Uh, you could use collage medium, you know, whatever your glue of choice is for, you know, collage type stuff. I just applied some glue to the left-hand side. Let's put that down. Uh, I'm okay with it being wrinkly. Now, you could do this with copy paper instead, but it would be thicker. I just like the texture of the collage paper um, better than copy paper. And if you were going to do this and say like your interleaved Bible or we're doing it in the margin of a journaling Bible, uh, the tissue paper is just thinner. So it's going to add less bulk to your Bible if you were doing a, several pages like this. 
And you can see I went ahead and glued down the right hand side. I find it easier to work, you know, a half at a time. And I'm gonna seal this in with a layer of the matte gel medium over the top. Now, because we use Distress Spray Stain, those are water reactive. So um, the medium, the matte gel medium is picking up a little bit of that color. You can kind of see it bleeding out into the white edges, but we're gonna cover the white edges. So I'm not worried about that, but I'm just trying to be careful not to overwork the paper and really move the ink too much. So I actually went and sat that outside in the sun and let it just dry and filmed another video while it dried because I wanted to make sure it was 100% dry before this next step. So I'm prepping it with a embossing tool. So this is just a powder tool. Um, there's several different ones out there because we're going to be doing some embossing. I want to make sure there's no moisture on this page and I'm testing it by just pouring some embossing powder onto the page and making sure it doesn't stick anywhere and it's not sticking. So I know that my glue is dry. I've gone ahead and used this new floral stamp set from Open Journey and loaded up all the stamps onto my stamp blocks. And we're gonna do some embossing along the edges of the notebook here. So I'm gonna stamp with some Versamark clear sticky ink. I'm blocking off or masking off the white edges with just a scrap piece of paper right now. Um, you'll see what we're gonna do here in a second. I'm gonna add some gold embossing powder. So I wanted to incorporate quite a bit of gold into this layout because we were talking about God's radiance. Uh, I just, I felt like that wasn't obvious. We needed to have some gold shimmer, shine, something on there somewhere. And this is gonna be a very gold heavy layout in the end. So I'm just gonna continue one at a time, stamping just a variety of florals here, masking off the edge, inking it up with Versamark clear sticky ink, stamping that down, adding some gold embossing powder, and then heat setting it. Uh, because this ink is clear, I can't really see where I've stamped, and so that's why I'm having to only do just one at a time. Um, it does take a little while, but you know, in the end, I really love how this layout came together. So you know, it's worth it. And the whole time I'm just thinking about the scripture, thinking about the notes that I took, uh, just, you know, praying about things going on in my life right now while I am doing this. So this isn't just mindless work for me. I am using this as a way to keep my hands busy while I'm meditating upon the study that we've been doing. I'm just going to continue doing that on both sides there. You can see all of that yummy shimmer. And now we're going to deal with those white edges. So I'm just going to take my Versamark ink pad and I'm just going to swipe that along the edge. So I'm just adding the ink only to the white area. And then we'll add that gold embossing powder. Now this first attempt, you can see it was a little splotchy. It wasn't perfect, but it's not a big deal. After I've heat set, heat set it, and at the end, I can go back over that and just add a little bit of ink in the splotchy areas where it missed. And once you melt it, it all just melts right back together and there's no seams. It's it's seamless um, as you do this. So I'm just going to do one edge at a time. And I'm kind of have my head turned to the side and I'm looking to see the edge of the ink pad as it lines up with the edge of that collage paper. And I just kind of swipe it back and forth a couple times. This is mixed media, so I'm okay with it not being perfect. I'm okay with there being texture. It's not super smooth. That's okay. That just adds to the mixed media feel and pulls everything together. So I'm just going to continue doing that. And, I, you know, if you're not working with collage papers or gel plates or whatever, you can still use all of these various little pieces that I'm using in here, um, maybe on a journaling card or on the edge of your Bible or, you know, I don't know, just take a little piece of this and then make it, make it your own. So now to really make these flowers stand out, I'm using a water brush and I am adding down a little bit of water within the stamped areas and then I'm dropping in some white watercolor and then a little bit of black watercolor. These are my Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. Yes, it's been forever since I've used these. Um, I'm using these paints because they're a little more opaque than traditional watercolors, but really any white watercolor is going to be on the more opaque side because it's got pigment in it that makes it white. So that is why you're able to see it on this background. And you see, it's not super, super obvious, but it's just kind of adding enough detail to those flowers to make them separated from the background. So again, I'm just adding a, a water down first, 
white watercolor and then dropping in black towards the base of the flower. So kind of in the shadowed areas. Um, because this was sealed with the matte gel medium over the top of the background, um, it's not absorbent. So that watercolor is not going to immediately soak in. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry, um, but that's okay. It gives you time to kind of play around, drop color in. If you don't like it, you can just immediately pick it back up with a paper towel um, and try again because we sealed that background. So you could try this with a variety of different colors. I really, really love the look of this and plan on doing something similar um, in the future. But because we've heat embossed those stamped florals, it's acting as a resist. So I'm not even having to be careful about coloring in the lines. The watercolor doesn't stick to the gold areas um, because they're slightly raised up. So the water just kind of sits in little, you know, the little in-between spots. And then the watercolor only sits in those in-between spots. And so it just... I don't know. It's very, very simple technique, but it really does make, make a difference on this layout. I really love the look of, of that and how it turned out. But uh, just going back in and adding some black splatters, you know me, we got to have some Lindsay splatters in there for doing mixed media. And then I felt like the frame around the edge was just too stark. So I'm going in with a black soot archival ink pad. You want to use either stays on or archival because this uh, heat embossed area is like a plastic. It's, it's not absorbent. So you need to use a permanent ink pad if you're going to do this, but uh, I had never done this before. This was just kind of a happy accident. I really love the distressed look that this gave just a little bit of black to kind of break up that gold. And I'm trying to be mindful of my color palette. You know, I'm sticking to neutrals with that pop of gold, but I'm wanting everything to be cohesive and kind of flow together. So bringing in you know, black onto certain areas as details, you know, there will be a little bit um, of white here and there. So just trying to, to, to color, to carry that color palette in, you know, a variety of, of areas on this layout. So this was one of the journaling cards from the kit and I ran it through my typewriter and typed out Hebrews 1, 3. And then I'm going with this, uh, tonic studios distress tool if you don't have this you could use your fingernail to rough up the edge you can use your scissors to rough up the edge if you just open up your scissors and kind of rub the blade along the edge it will give you a similar look and this just kind of distresses the edge I don't really love super flat edges when I'm doing mixed media I want it like I said, messy, want texture. And then I'm inking up those edges with some black soot distress ink. You could also use the archival ink pad. Um, I don't know. I just grab whatever's, whatever's sitting next to me. And again, this is just, you know, again, bringing that black detail. Um, so everything is cohesive. I did feel like they were too stark white on this layout at this point. So I'm going in initially with some hickory smoke. Yes. Hickory smoke. Yes, hickory smoke distress ink and a makeup brush at first and just kind of roughly blending it over to mute the white a little bit. And then I ultimately end up bringing in a little bit of pumice stone as well. Um, this is a more warm gray and the hickory smoke is a more cool gray. And there are warms and cools in this kit. So I, you know, it kind of worked to do, to do both. And it just makes that a more dingier looking white background and it blends in with the uh, the layout a little bit better. It's not so stark. I did the same thing for those circular stickers that I will be adding on there as well. Because I used Distress Inks, I did go ahead and just spritz a little bit of plain water onto here uh, and that activates the ink and leaves these little water spots. Um, again, just adding more texture, trying to get these to feel like they fit with all of the texture that's on the background of that collage paper that we had created at the start there. So now I can start kind of placing things. These tickets are going to act as a journaling spot for my prayer journaling. And then typically I edit this out <laughs> because I've already kind of have an idea of where things are going to go. But for some reason, I really struggled with this layout. I love how it came out, but 
because I was doing a lot of new techniques and things I've never done before, I just wasn't quite sure from the beginning where it was going to go. And so I'm leaving this in where you can see I'm moving things around, testing things out, looking at things, you know, I'm trying to think about thirds. So I'm keeping in mind those two circular stickers and I'm going to add a circular stamp. And so I'm just trying to keep in mind that I want kind of a triangular shape. I'm working in threes, you know, kind of being mindful where things are. I don't want straight lines as far as like, I don't know how things line up. So I, that's just all the things that I'm thinking about while I'm testing stuff out <laughs> on the page. But now I kind of feel pretty confident about where it's going to wrap up here so I can start gluing everything down. I prefer to use a liquid glue when I'm working on something like this where there's a lot of texture. You know, we have that matte gel medium, so it's more of a plastic texture on the paper. Uh, and so that's why that liquid adhesive is just a better adhesive to use. And same thing goes for stamping. If I'm going to stamp on this, I want to stamp with something permanent. Sorry, you're getting my gray hairs, but that archival ink is what I'm using to stamp because that background is more of that plasticky texture. I do decide to go in and just add some pen details to these circle stickers. Just again, try and tie everything together. So since I added black borders to the cards, I'm adding, you know, a type of black border to those stickers. Here are those stickers that I created using my label maker with the first address there. Off camera, I went ahead and wrote out my prayer on those tickets. And then I'm going to use this stamp that says alive and active. And so I'm going to stamp the first part of it alive and at the top up here on this ticket. And then I'll stamp active on the bottom ticket. So I'm just inking up you know, a portion at a time. I am cleaning the stamp set in between or the stamp in between. That way I don't have any kind of ghost stamping happening. I still didn't get a perfect stamped impression. So I'm just going in with a micron pen to really define the areas that weren't perfectly stamped and it works. So there is a look at the finished layout. I absolutely love how this came out. I hope you guys were inspired by this and encouraged to try something new. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Check out that description box for links to everything that I used or mentioned. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.